welcome to another Wednesday night with Sonar. I'm your host, Tommy Iago. Here we are on the show that dives deep into the Sonar platform and the data that we have here at FreightWaves to give you better insights into the entire transportation industry. With me as always, my main man, Luke Velasca. Glad to be here yet again for another Wednesday edition. Yeah, man, appreciate you taking the time once again this week to join me. Anytime, uh, I appreciate you coming to the office this week. Yeah, did you miss me up in Nashville hanging out at the Air Cargo 2020 event? It was amazing. You missed a really good time, a lot of great food. I'm, I, I don't doubt it. I, somebody had to keep the office moving, so, you know. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, we got a pretty exciting show tonight. Yeah. A couple of great guests on. Yeah, we're got, gonna, got some smart folks coming. Some smart folks. We're going to be wrapping up uh, some of the adventures we had up in Nashville. Uh, yep. you, you can you can chime in if you'd like. I know you didn't really get to participate, so uh, the company but, usually leaves me behind when you have to. Yeah, you've got some useful information. I'm sure you can add. Yeah, we'll, but we'll before see. we do that, we, what are we got to talk about? Before we jump in, we got to talk about mug of the week. My mug of the week. Come on. My good friends at Arrive Logistics. You can check them out at ArriveLogistics.com. Uh, they're a rock star 3PL. They got they got three offices oh, now. Yeah. Um, they're Chicago, Austin, yep. Chattanooga. So, you know, the Chattanooga Three folks, monster hubs there for freight Yeah, and right tech. across the road from us. Um, I've had the pleasure of touring both the Austin office and here in the Chattanooga office Do they as compare? Well. Are they similar? Uh, the, the Austin office is a monstrous. It is a huge office. Really? Uh, Chattanooga is actually growing. They are uh, moving into a new space because they're, uh, they're looking to add more and more folks. So uh, something of note about Arrive is if you're looking to get into the logistics yeah. game, Arrive is looking to grow their brokerage floor here in Chattanooga and Austin and Chicago. But uh, I know that the Chattanooga office is seeing some real growth right now. Right on. Um, well, but something really cool, I went over there today to pick up the mug. Okay. They are actually doing something really great for our community right now. They're collecting um, jackets, blankets, clothing oh, yeah. uh, for the homeless. Yeah. Uh, so if you want to donate, if you're able to donate some of those articles to uh, to Arrive Logistics for the homeless, you can reach out uh, to uh, via LinkedIn is the best way to get in contact with Bree, uh, and she'll be able to help hook you up. Perfect. Awesome. awesome. That's good stuff. Love to hear it. Well, you ready to dive into some data, my friend? Let's do it, buddy. Always awesome. ready. Well, I was uh, so excited and so thrilled to get to go up to uh, to Nashville and meet with the Air Cargo folks. So to help me wrap up uh, what we learned and what we talked about from a sonar standpoint up there, tonight we have uh, returning to the show Chris Henry and joining us for the first time, Vice President of Customer Success Todd Davis. Let's give him All a right. hand, man. Fantastic. Give him a hand. Come, Come on, on in, guys. Fellas. Hold your applause, you everyone. Again. Good to see you again. Good to see you. Good Luke, to see you. Good to see you, sir. Don't put me on the good end. Good to see you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We'll just kick Luke off down to the, yeah. the edge there. Uh, absolutely. All right, guys. And we got a full house today. Full Come house. on. I had to bring in the couch. I had to bring in the couch, which, by the way, is very comfortable. Yeah. yeah very you, nice. have a little, you have enough space over there? Uh, just enough space, yeah. I need an ottoman. Well, Todd, Chris, a little ottoman, welcome. Table. <laughs> I see you guys uh, have made it back in one piece, just like I did. Uh, a little, little tired from this week. It was a Absolutely. lot of fun, right? Yeah, whirlwind. Whirlwind. Definitely, well attended. A lot of yeah. attendees at the show. I think that was up on a year-over-year -year basis. You know, several percentage points, about 800 people. You know, uh, a very dynamic industry. It was a lot of great folks. We had a lot of great conversations mm -hmm. there at the Freight Waves booth. Then we had the uh, the party that uh, American Lion Hall was sponsoring. Mm -hmm. That was a lot of fun. Got Very a couple nice. of free cowboy hats, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was a great event. It's it's the first time I've ever been to Air Cargo. Yeah. And they said it was up 30% over last year. Yes. Um, and uh, we just announced a partnership uh, with the Air Forward Association who puts the the, uh, it puts the event on in conjunction with a couple other uh, folks. Yeah. And uh, we're just super excited about what we can bring to the industry and we're getting some really good feedback about what FreightWaves is doing, specifically for the air cargo and air forward Air Forwarders group. So that's awesome. Yeah, uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about something special that we have for the AFA uh, a little bit later. But uh, I, I kind of wanted you guys to come on today so that we can discuss what we were showing, why we're why were the guys that deal in uh, truckload data at the air cargo event? You know, a lot of folks think about us. Uh, we, they see me and Luke every single week, and former brokers talking about um, outbound tender rejection and trucking volumes. Why were we at the air cargo event? Well, I mean, you know, the supply chain is just that. It's a chain. Multiple links in the chain. One of those links is air cargo. Air cargo represents, uh, globally, represents anywhere from 1% to 3% of global cargo volumes, but it represents roughly 30 to 35% of cargo value. So a very integral part of the uh, companies and shipper supply chains, you know, high-value products, speed to market. 
uh, you know, cargo security, those types of things. Uh, most shippers are involved in air cargo to some point, mm -hmm. uh, and along along with trucking and maritime. And our data sets, as rich as they are in, in, in truckload, maritime, rail, intermodal, and air cargo, you know, paint like a holistic picture of the entire network. Right. Uh, you know, great graphics, uh, great data sets that allow yeah. people to see capacity, ca projected <laughs> capacity that's going to be online in the coming time frames. You know, volumes that are moving, um, commodity flows that are moving as well. That seemed to be some of the main takeaways in some of the conversations I had there. Folks were very interested to be able to see commodity level detail and things like that. But yeah, I mean, most of the, you know, most of the forward folks, they're running ground networks, ground truckload networks, right. uh, the airlines. The, um, the freighter airlines as well as the belly freight airlines that were there, they also have ground networks as well. Not everything that's air freight actually moves on an airplane. So, you know, it's a great chance to connect with those people, be able to show them holistically all of the different data sets that we have that can help with air, uh, uh, truckload, and then also too, like maybe from a maritime perspective. Absolutely. Yeah. So speaking of some of those data sets, I, I had pulled up and we can dive into this uh, on my screen here, uh, looking at our, our 135 major markets, our weighted uh, rejection index, which Luke is called what now? It's your money map. <laughs> your yeah, money absolutely, map. man. Uh, and then on the lifted scale, the, the 3D side of things, uh, our risers is the outbound tender market share. But what we've laid on top of this, uh, and what we were showing and talking through uh, with some of those folks up there uh, in Nashville was uh, the traffic of, of all the airplanes and all the maritime vessels that we're tracking. Um, what, what are we looking at here, guys? Why, what's the, uh, so let's scroll into the port of Savannah, looking at uh, all these airplanes uh, coming into the port of Savannah, uh, all these ships coming into the port of Savannah. What, what are we trying to uh, understand looking at all of this information? Oh, I mean, it's just insane. You know, it kind of shows the uh, integrated complexity of, of uh, you know, the global transportation network. You know, in terms of uh, the, the continental United States market map there, you're looking at like weighted rejections. Uh, if it's blue, rejection rates are, are tend to be a little bit higher around Savannah, you know, especially with all the throughput coming through the port there. Uh, uh -huh. Definitely uh, a lot more opportunity for providers, for carriers outbound from that market. So rejections or volumes and rejections are up, you know, a little bit higher in that particular market. Um, you know, some of that product as it moves inland may get on a truck that may go, uh, that may be an air freight forwarder truck that right. might go to an end shipper, uh, that type of thing. Or conversely, if you see truckload moving into the Atlanta market, into the, um, uh, you know, the Atlanta metro market, and say we've, we've, uh, we're looking specifically at Hartsfield-Jackson Airport, we've got locations there from a cargo handling facility perspective, geofenced, we can see truck volumes going in as well as coming out so you can see you know who's shipping what where what frequency you know uh but actionable detail that yeah. uh, the air freight forwarders and the airlines themselves were interested in talking about so really diving i mean more granular than anything else out there oh right? absolutely it's just yeah all the way to through the end you can find out what who the shipper is what the final continuity is mm -hmm. Everything. Yeah, you so, can find out yeah, the border, the BCO, uh, you can find out origin destination. Um, you know, we do have in the data sets, we do have linkages that show uh, commodity types that both move via maritime as well as air. So there's a lot of good actionable data there for folks that might be looking to develop, uh, you know, some, some uh, marketing uh, lists, marketing campaigns, things like that. I, yeah, I was going to say, I feel like a lot of the conversations we had up there were around just prospecting, finding new customers, right. gaining, growing their market share. Right. Mm -hmm. So how, how can they utilize this? Just being able to dive into that data, pick it apart and say, who do I need to reach out to next? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we can surface that up in like a customized view uh, to the customer if that's what they would like, if they're interested in just, you know, certain uh, lanes, certain commodities, uh, things along those lines. They, that way they, they don't have to look at all the entire data set. They can look at just what is actionable to them. But, you know, one of the things that the whole industry has seen over the last year or so just with, you know, trade disruption and just uh, uh, overcapacity and general softness in the market is the fact that that uh, volumes and cargo air, air volumes and air cargo revenues are down so you know the the impetus is there for those operators to be able to you know increase load factor on their planes be able to increase load factor on their trucks generate revenue you know all the things that anybody that operates assets that's going to be near and dear to their heart wow one so of the things that w that was brought up during the conference at the end of the conference was the coronavirus mm -hmm. and the yeah. effect on air cargo in general, because a lot of that cargo is in the belly of those passenger planes. Sure. So we're going to start seeing that come through in the data over the next couple of weeks yes. as those those uh, networks 
you know, uh, slow down or, or cease, mm -hmm. wh what's going to happen to the cargo? So there's, there's a lot of confusion out there right now, and I think the data is going to tell a lot of the story, and we're, we're going to be able to write about it as well. That's I mean, awesome. ju just today, I think British Airways mm -hmm. advised that they were going to shut off uh, or, or suspend, not shut off, but suspend flights to and from mainland China, just not the affected areas, and they run freighters. They have a lot of wide-body uh, belly capacity lift out yeah. there. So, I mean, immediately, you know, that, that will have an effect. Now, a lot of China is one of the one of the larger air hubs, particularly like Hong Kong and some of those other air, some Shanghai. of those big cities. Mm -hmm. Those are Shanghai. Mm -hmm. Are those are, the, are those places going to be affected as well? You think with uh, the coronavirus and potentially? Uh, well, potentially? absolutely. The on the auto side, I know Ford has mentioned they're shutting down uh, operations like feeder plants okay. there, and so absolutely. I think it's 47, 57 million people in that one, one area, area that's been quarantined. Yeah. So this is wow. a major it's major like quarantining a country. Yeah. You know, yeah. the size of it, an actual oh, country. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. so. But on the flip side, you have to get supplies to those people, so that's, there's right. going to be yeah. things What will that do to, do you think that will, will have much of an effect on air freight rates during this time? Will we see an increase? Will other folks have to pick up the slack somewhere else? I, I think it will def it'll definitely have an effect on capacity, because capacity in certain lanes will probably come offline. Uh, to Chris's point about maybe then trying to, if, if supplies are needed to go inbound, to try to help people in the affected areas. You know, you may see elevated rates if carriers, or, you know, pure freighter operators or belly freight operators are trying to help get supplies closer to the affected areas that then maybe the, you know, the Chinese government or some of the other governments in the area might use to, to help affected people. You may see rates go up in that, in that regard. Okay. Uh, but yeah, definitely, there, I think there will be capacity and rate Volatility, dislocations of volatility. Sure. 23, 23. Yeah. Now the whole world knows what yeah. your pen is. <laughs> if you ever want to get on Chris Henry's laptop, Michael so Jordan, I, Michael Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. 23, 23. Uh, there okay. you go. Yeah. yeah. I, I can't There's even. There's my bank pen, whatever you need. <laughs> I yeah. can't even hear Michael Jordan right now because I still got COVID. Yeah, oh, no, geez. Geez. Just, yeah, What yeah. a, what a yeah. weird week. Yeah, um, so you guys actually uh, brought some data that's that's kind of uh, customized outside of. Yeah. Yes. yeah. So Henry Henry Byers, our supermarket expert. Supermarket he, expert. He he he, he developed uh, um, uh, some custom views specifically uh -huh. for the conference, and the attendees were blown away by by what he's created. So Todd's going to walk us through. Yeah. Some let's of those. let's dive into this if Absolutely, we can. I'll pull yeah. it up on the main screen, and Todd, if you, if yeah. you can see that, or I can turn the computer a little bit. But what yeah, are we absolutely. looking at here? So this is a customized view, and this is outside of the normal sonar, mm -hmm. uh, but it's still it's still sonar data. It's still freight waves data that we've used to, to put this together. Absolutely. So this is just a, a representation uh, in in a, uh, a different platform of import export data. It's showing in the top left hand corner the continental map of the continental United States. It's showing uh, areas where product is being imported or exported or imported to or exported from. And then the the uh, uh, line, the, the bar graph with the blue on it there kind of in the middle is telling the split between what's imported, what's exported, okay. percentages, and then over time, I believe that's a uh, revenue uh, number there as well. So again, you know, this is kind of a high level 30,000 foot view if someone was like interested in looking at a particular uh, HTS commodity code or they were interested in looking at a particular state or lane, you could start there and then just start to drill in to be able to get more granular to understand who and where and when and how much, that type okay. of thing. So is this something, and I know you said Henry, one of our market experts ha has put this together, but is this something that existing customers can, can lean on your team uh, sure. uh, to help build out? Uh, on, is it a case by case basis? Can, are, are folks doing this on a daily? How does, how do these types of uh, we, yeah, we customized can, views come together? We we can work with them on a case by case basis to understand you know what their needs are, uh, uh, lanes or commodities or areas that they're interested in, and then help them uh, kind of frame up the the view that they want. And then obviously uh, with ingesting our data on some type of regular cadence, you know whatever their cadence needs may be, they can pull that data in and see it in that view and be able to have that picture. Wow. You know, with drill down capability that kind of then gives them something that's actionable to turn around to the, the functional teams that they have that are more customer facing, go out and have those conversations. That's amazing. Yeah. And a lot, Sorry, a lot of it too is competitive benchmarking. So using transactional data, be able to, uh, based on what they know of the market, understand where they are relative <laughs> to their peers. So forecasting, understanding what their market share is. A lot of times they were just guessing before. And with these views, they're able to actually 
quantify it. Wow. And they weren't, they weren't before. They've told us that. So. so we've actually heard from existing customers, we weren't able to do this before, but now with the power of the sonar data, mm -hmm. we've, we've put this together and it made a noticeable change. Sure. Exactly. Noticeable difference. Yes, yeah, so some of the other, uh, some of the other uh, data sets out there were probably a little bit more clunky to use, a little harder to use, really had to have you know, some, some expertise to be able to navigate through them and find actionable intelligence. But with, yeah. uh, with our data sets, not just one data set, but with data sets that we're able to pull together, particularly in this view, kind of marries it all together. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's really amazing. Yeah. Um, now, Chris, were you? I know you, your uh, carrier profitability is, is your main focus. Were you able to correlate any things that we learned uh, at this Air Cargo event that, that would help uh, your existing customers from Engage and then future Sonar customers uh, to, to help correlate some of those things together? Uh, well, I'm, I'm just still learning on the Air Cargo side yeah. and, and, and more specifically on the forward side. Our, my main goal at that event was to determine if there was some uh, interest in forming benchmarking groups and benchmarking programs within the air forwarder community. So we've actually launched a, a partnership with the Air Forwarders Association. Um, and if you go to the website, airforwarders.org, under me member resources and you're a member, you can actually sign up for a free trial. Mm -hmm. And what we're trying to do is provide the transactional uh, level of detail and item, action items to the, the forwarders and our air cargo side, as well as the lagging indicators, so the financial and operational performance to see, okay, those decisions I made, did they actually turn into profits? And then actually have a, a conduit or a forum for these companies, non-direct competitors, to share information with each other to get better, more efficient, lower the risk, risk profiles, and uh, hopefully become more profitable. Awesome. Mm -hmm. So you, you brought up the, the free trial that we're offering. Mm -hmm. So that's through partnership with uh, the uh, Air Forwarders Association. Mm -hmm. If you go to their website, we have a link there. If, if you're a member, you can get access to Sonar. How long? Uh, Till June. Till June. Yep. So they have nice. it. Access, they can uh, see what use cases work for them. Um, we, I think we have already have about 25 companies signed up on that mm -hmm. trial and uh, a lot more coming down the pipeline because of the, the conference this week. So uh, we're pretty excited about this new market for freight waves. And, yeah. and, uh, and I, I know we're not, you know, given the free trial is amazing, uh, but we're not real big on just giving you the keys to the castle and leaving you alone. I, I assume that yep. Todd, your team, uh, is going to be working with these folks as they're on this free trial and, and actually being able to, to find some profitability, some immediate ROI. Oh, yeah. Um, absolutely. Things like that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah, definitely there's, uh, you know, deep uh, uh, support here within the Freight Waves organization for those customers. Uh, you know, we want to onboard them the right way, give them a good overview to the Sonar platform, what it is, what all data sets are available to them, really listen to them, listen to kind of what their pain points are, listen to what their needs are, and then help them understand in our the data in our system, be able to see uh, greater insight and get greater value you out of it and then just stay with them you know down the line it's not a hey here it is sign on here's a uh, you know a list of definitions for the data sets and you know see you later one of those types of things you know it's more of a recurring check-in consultative approach and and just as Chris kind of brought up is this gives us an opportunity to learn from them as well um, as they're diving in and using right. our product and trying to discover ways that, that make sense uh, from their standpoint so I, that's really amazing to have this partnership Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, so Luke, be, be reaching out to all the other air forwarders that uh, that aren't in the association. <laughs> well, we'll, the, we'll see how we'll see how many we can we can bring on board here. <laughs> now, it, 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 it's true. You said a good point. It's fun to fun to be able to learn, and kind of like Chris, I'm in the same boat here, just trying to learn a little bit more about that side of of the freight industry because it all does correlate together. So just mm -hmm. being able to see how those things interconnect. I mean, we've got, I mean, cause even, even a lot of the carriers and brokers that we work with, they're, they're making truckload pickups at airports or right. deliveries at airports. Sure. I mean, when we were, when I was in brokerage, we had a couple of airlines that were customers of ours and we were making, you know, deliveries back and forth. So there's, there's a lot of data there that, that's helpful even for those guys just to be able to understand and see, you know, where trends are going, mm -hmm. you know, what, what things are, you know what what things are going to look at whether that's something as simple as seeing the wait times at an airport um so th th there's a lot of, a lot of good stuff there so what i found especially at this conference was the more specific the use case it felt like the higher the ro roi yeah. mm -hmm. so 
you know, Todd and his team were actually able, while we were on the, the conference floor, to actually sp pick out specific use cases, and they communicated right away, well, that would pay for my sonar subscription like that. Yeah. So we need to uh, charge them more, is what yeah, you're yeah, saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll come back to that conversation. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, well, that's fantastic. So, um, so again, go into, uh, give us the website for, for finding yeah, that. Airforwarders.org, so that's okay. the Air Forwarders Association website. Mm -hmm. Under memory resources, there's a specific link. Uh, so if you complete that um, form, uh, you get right into the, uh, the uh, Sonar sales team pipeline for that trial, and then you have access until June uh, to Sonar. So someone here will set you up, and uh, then we'll, we'll get you in contact with mm -hmm. Todd and his exactly. customer success team, and just get you rocking on the platform. Absolutely, right? man. Awesome. Uh, and if and you if have trouble finding any of that, just leave us a comment, and we'll Absolutely. we'll get you yeah, there. We'll, for sure. We'll <laughs> make sure you get <laughs> there Absolutely. if you're having trouble. Just leave us a comment. So. And, if, and if you're not a member of the AFA uh, and you want to see more about Sonar, we again have our amazing uh, QR code down in the bottom right-hand nice. corner. If you're interested in a demo, just give that a quick scan. Reach And uh, my team, Luke's team, will reach out to you and get you set up on a demo. And uh, we can correlate to any part of the freight market you want to talk about now and, mm -hmm. and learn from each other. Or if it's just uh, getting a better grasp of uh, changing rates, changing volumes, um, throughout the uh, entire industry. That's what we're here to help with. So, um, Guys, was there anything else in particular that you wanted to cover or mention from uh, from our experiences in Nashville? No, just well done. We, we had a great time, and we're, we're honored to be part of a, a partnership I, with, with the AFA yeah. and uh, look forward to many future events. I'm going gonna, gonna to say this uh, comment with just a few minutes left, so hopefully no one uh, gets, sends me an angry email. but. These air cargo folks can party. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I've, I've partied with brokers yeah, and carriers about before, <laughs> and uh, these guys, these guys can hang. Yeah, well done, well done. <laughs> we uh, we had a great little setup for uh, uh, Monday night's party at the Country Music Hall of Fame. That was that was yeah, really that awesome. was fascinating. Yeah. It was a nice, nice venue. And, yeah. and I didn't great have party. I didn't have bad food all week either, which is <laughs> oh, no. Man, yeah, they put on a, put on a top shelf uh, top shelf program. Fantastic. Well, thanks for bringing us some back to the office. You're for, welcome, Luke. I know you're a big food guy. So had, uh, <laughs> how to stay back. <laughs> yeah, appreciate you. <laughs> uh, oh, I'm gonna get the angry email is gonna be from Luke. He's just gonna yeah. send me a <laughs> So, guys, I really appreciate you being able to come on. Uh, Chris, for joining us again, Thank Todd, you again. for the first time. Uh, it's always interesting to hear your insights. Uh, you guys have both been in this industry for a long time, and and uh, still learning, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So that's great. So. Um, for everyone here at Freight Waves, uh, we're wrapping up here a little bit on time, but I do want to thank again my partners and friends at Arrive Logistics for my mug of the week. I'm going to slide it from out behind the QR code. There we go. Oh, uh, oh, okay. No. <laughs> it's on there somewhere, <laughs> right in front of the computer. There we go. Um, might get another angry meal about that one too. But, <laughs> <laughs> but thanks again. If you want to sponsor the mug of the week, please reach out to me on LinkedIn or uh, tigo at freightwaves.com, and we can. Uh, have you as a sponsor of the mug of the week and talk a little bit about your company and i will drink coffee out of your mug that's that is the deal i will make you we know there's not coffee in there there's not coffee in here well i get a little too hyper when i drink coffee on set you know <laughs> <laughs> all right guys well from everyone here at freight waves i wish you a happy evening um enjoy your rest of your wednesday and we'll see you next week sounds good thank you thank you <laughs>